Good morning. This is Pastor Jeff. Today is Wednesday, August 7th, 2024. We are in our semi-continuous readings for our daily lectionary readings, which means today, Psalm 50, 16 through 23, is going to be our psalm reading. 2 Samuel 13, 20 through 36, is going to be our Old Testament reading. And the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, Verses 1 through 10 is going to be our New Testament reading. And I'm going to click on it. And it looks like we are in the message. So we will go ahead and stay with the message, our psalm reading. Next, God calls up the wicked. What are you up to? Quoting my laws. Talking like we are good friends. You never answer the door when I call. You treat my words like garbage. If you find a thief, you made him your buddy. Adulterers are your friends of choice. Your mouth drools filth. Lying is a serious art form with you. You stab your own brother in the back. Rip off your little sister. I kept a quiet patience while you did these things. You thought I went along with your game. I'm calling you out on the carpet now. Laying your wickedness out in plain sight. Time up for playing fast and loose with me. I'm ready to pass sentence and there's no help in sight. It's the praising life that honors me. As soon as you set foot on the way, I'll show you my salvation. Our new, sorry, our Old Testament reading is going to be 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 20 through 39. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has your brother Amnon had his way with you? Now, my dear sister, let's keep it quiet, a family matter. He is, after all, your brother. Don't take this so hard. Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's home, bitter and desolate. King David heard the whole story and was enraged, but he didn't discipline Amnon. David doted on him because he was his firstborn. Absalom quit speaking to Amnon, not even a word, whether good or bad because he hated him for violating his sister Tamar. Two years went by. One day, Absalom threw a sheep-shearing party in Baal Hazan in the vicinity of Ephraim and invited all of the king's sons. He also went to the king and invited him, Look, I'm throwing a sheep-shearing party. Come, bring your servants. But the king said, No, son, not this time, and not the whole household. We'd just be a burden on you. Absalom pushed, but David wouldn't budge, but he did give him his blessings. Then Absalom said, Well, if you won't come, at least let my brother Ammon come. And why, said the king, should he go with you? But Absalom was so insistent that he gave in and let Ammon and all the rest of the king's sons go. Absalom prepared a banquet fit for a king. <clears throat> then he instructed his servants, Look sharp now. When Amnon is well into the sauce and feeling no pain, and I give the order, Strike Amnon, kill him, and don't be afraid. I'm the one giving the command. Courage, you can do it. Absalom's servants did to Amnon exactly what their master ordered. All the king's sons got out so fast as they could, jumped on their mules, and rode off. While they were still on the road, a rumor came to the king. Absalom just killed all the king's sons. Not one is left. The king stood up, ripped his clothes to shreds, and threw himself on the floor. All his servants who were standing around at that time did the same. Just then, Jonabad, his brother Shimon's son, stepped up. My master must not think all the young men 
the king's sons are dead. Only Ammon is dead. This happened because of Absalom's outrage since the day that Ammon violated his sister Tamar. So my master, the king, mustn't have it make things worse than they are, thinking that all your sons are dead. Only Ammon is dead. Absalom fled. Just then, the sentry on duty looked up and saw a cloud of dust on the road from Horanium alongside of the mountain. <coughs> he came and told the king, I've just seen a bunch of men on the Honoram Road coming around the mountain. Then Jonabad exclaimed to the king, See, the king's son's coming, just as I said. He had no sooner said the word that the king's sons burst in loud lament and weeping. The king joined in, along with all the servants, loud, weeping, many tears. David mourned the death of his son a long time. When Absalom fled, he went to Talmari's son of Amrion, the king of Gehor, and he was there three years. The king finally gave up, trying to get back at Absalom. He had come to the terms with Ammon's death. As I scroll down, our gospel reading is Mark 8, 1 through 10. At about the same time, he again found himself with a hungry crowd on his hands. He called his disciples together and said, This crowd is breaking my heart. They had struck with me for three days, and now they have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they'll faint along the way, and some of them have come a long distance. His disciples responded, What do you expect us to do about it? Buy food out here in the desert? And he asked, How much bread do we have? Seven loaves, they said. So Jesus told the crowd to sit down on the ground. After giving thanks, he took the seven bread loaves, broke them into pieces, and gave them to his disciples, so they could hand it out to the crowd. They also had a very few fish. He pronounced a blessing over the fish and told his disciples to hand them out as well. The crowd ate its fill. Seven sacks of leftovers were collected. There they were, well over 4,000 at that meal. Then he sent them home. He themselves went straight to the boat with the disciples and set out for Dalamatha. And here ends our readings for the day.